everyone. So your next homework assignment is going to be a three week long project. Three weeks, plenty of plenty of time to do this. I don't want to hear any excuses about not having enough time. You have three weeks for your next homework assignment. You're going to have a milestone check in uh, on Sunday where everybody has to have connected to the GitHub and pushed at least one change to it uh, to show that you're alive. That that's the first milestone that'll be due on Sunday. Second milestone will be due a week from today where you're going to have to checkpoint and show me you've got forward progress made on your game. You've got, uh, you got a substantial amount of work done. Uh, again, this is to encourage you guys not to wait to the last minute, but to actually work on uh, the project consistently. This is going to be different from most of our homework assignments in that it is both group graded and it is individually graded. So it's a 20 point homework assignment. 10 points are going to be group grades. 10 points are going to be individual grades. Okay. And so you're going to be using GitHub Classroom. You're going to be in groups of four, uh, some groups of three, one group of five, mostly groups of four. And uh, and the collective section has points for like, you can see here, is the game fun? You know, things like that, that you sort of collaboratively get, get points for. Uh, but the individual sections, which I'll get to in a bit, each person on your team is going to have a unique role and something that they are responsible for themselves. And if it doesn't get done, they get a zero. And if it does get done, they get a 10. You know, it's it's independent of the rest of the work on the, on the project. And this is not only gonna help you guys have some division of labor on the project, but um, it'll also give like accountability for the different sessions as well. So let's talk about the group uh, part. So you're gonna be making a role-playing game, an RPG, a uh, text-based RPG. Uh, the theme could be anything you want. Uh, I've had students do like Mad Max, Fury Road, and and you know all sorts of you know interesting Zelda, you know whatever. You know, don't sue me, Nintendo. Uh, Zelda uh, inspired uh, <laughs> text based games, let's say, um, over the years. Uh, theme you can come up with whatever you want. Uh, basically, there just needs to be some minimal criteria that you have to meet. So first of all, the game should be fun. Uh, it should have a decent amount of content. These are these are vague. These are subjective. Uh, these five points are basically, I'm going to play your game. Like, oh, that's cool. I like this. You know, I'll give you points if I really like it. I'll even give you extra credit on it. Cool. Um, uh, it, you know, you can't just instantly win. I also don't want the game to take too long because then it takes me too long to grade them. You know, if a game takes like 10 hours to beat, like, nah, ain't nobody got time for that, right? So you should be shooting for about, I don't know, three, five minutes of gameplay, something like that. Uh, it's got to have a world map in color. You could also do V3WD, but that is four characters, uh, boss instead of instead of three. So the, the, the requirement was exactly three keystrokes. Um, okay. So you have to have a world map in color. Uh, you have to be able to win and lose. There should be a game over screen for both winning and losing. Maybe not a screen, but like, you know, like print, like, hey, you've successfully defeated the dragon or whatever. And there needs to be combat of some sort. Again, I'm leaving all these things fairly vague. If you want to have combat take place through, uh, I don't know, rock, papers, you know, like, you know what I mean? Like, I I'm not specifying any particular mechanic or design. I ju there just needs to be conflict. There needs to be winning. There needs to be losing. There needs to be a colored world map and things like that. Okay, how would the world map work? Uh, we'll get to that when we get to the uh, Jujutsu Kaisen uh, curse, uh, special curse grade, special grade curse. Okay. Um, okay. So next up is documentation. So you are going to have to create a file, and I'm giving you nothing for this assignment. There is zero starter files. There is no demo bridges code. There's no uh, world map nothing. I am giving you the readme file and that's it. And you guys are going to have to create a file called readme.md. MD stands for markdown, which if any of you guys have used Discord, which all of you on Discord right now have used, uh, you should be familiar with the ability to mark like things with like italics and things like that. That's in a language called markdown. And so you're going to need to make a file called readme.md markdown. It's mostly text, but it's kind of marked up a little bit. Uh, with things like bold and bullet points and things like that. So you're going to have to make a nice readme file. It's going to have to describe your game. What's your game about? How do I beat it? Because I don't want to have to like guess the, you know, answers to your riddles and things like that. Uh, give me whatever key commands I need to know, any command line parameters, this kind of stuff. 
uh, you need to use make markdown to make it more than just a boring text document. What I've given you here is a boring text document. I want you to mark it up. Uh, for example, uh, if you want to look at my colors.h, um, GitHub page here. Uh, let's see, that's the actual code. Uh, here is my here's my readme.md file. You can see here I've got text, I got text, and look, here's a block of code, and I can just click on that and it copies the code. Neat. Here's more code. I can copy that. Look, up arrow, down arrow, right arrow, left arrow. Cool. Uh, if you want to have colored text like this, bold blue, bold yellow, red. Um, you can set background colors, foreground colors in my colors library. Um, so, uh, if y'all, you're asking, how do I make a colored map? Well, you know, this would work also. My, my colors, uh, my colors library would work just fine for that. You can do 24 bit color. And in fact, this is actually a text document here. It, it looks like Monet's, you know, uh, was it the, the water lilies? Was that, is that the name of the series? Is that the name of the series? Just, okay, yeah, water lilies, okay. Yeah, that's actually a text document. This is actually a screenshot of putty, you know, putty being, you know, this, which is text. Uh, that's actually a shot of putty. That's Those are all letters that are printed in 24-bit color. So uh, back, what'd you miss? Uh, we're going over your next homework assignment. Your homework assignment, you have three weeks to do something really cool. And so uh, Putty, Putty tends to lag or crash when rendering 4K images inside of it. Uh, they still haven't fixed the bug. I don't, I don't know what's wrong with them. Anyhow, so, <laughs> but do you, do you guys see what I mean? Like, this is a markdown document. So I've got images inside of it. I've got demo demo code on, like, how to do stuff. I've got, you know, yeah. like, also, you know, like, I've been using, it's not, like, that complicated, but it looks better than just, like, text. Yes, girl. Did you know that um, you can dye leather armor? You can what? Dye leather armor in any combination that you want. You can dye leather armor? Yeah, um, and there's this app where you can, um, there's a color picker, and then it shows you the exact recipe for that. Oh, interesting. Do you know what a, does it give it to you in a hex code? Um, no, it, it just shows you, like, the dye recipe. Do you know the, uh, this kind of stuff, girl? No, it doesn't give you any of that. You just, like, it's no. like that, that scroll, of, and you just drag the screen to find a color, and then there's gotcha. that box where you drag for how bright you want it to be. Nice. Okay, so you guys need to use Markdown. And you also need to make a uh, logo for your game of some sort. So you have to have a picture in it that is embedded and uh, that that is the uh, splash screen or whatever, you know, whatever you want, like some some icon representing your game, right? Uh, next up, you have to, this is the most important one here, which is your readme file has to uh, say who worked on each one of the bullet points. Um, if a person was on your project and didn't contribute, then mention that as well. Uh, if, if the people don't contribute by Sunday, uh, the lab time for today is just you have to push, make a push request up to your GitHub repo um, to, to be like, I'm alive. <laughs> if, if a person in your group has not done that by Sunday at midnight, then I will kick them out and uh, you won't have an anchor in your party. All right. So with this part here, you guys are going to have to say, oh, you know, Brandon was responsible for the combat system and Lamar was responsible for uh, the world map in color. So for every bullet point in this requirements here, I want you to list which person is responsible for it, all right? Most importantly, if you didn't do one of the bullet points, like you didn't uh, do inheritance, which we'll see down below, then note, we did not do inheritance. I do not want to have to hunt around for where you mentioned who did inheritance only to not, you know, re to find that it's not in there at all. Don't make me hunt around. Just be like, yeah, we didn't do this one or this one. It's fine. Okay. Um, also, again, to try and discourage you from waiting until the last minute to do all of your code, which is normal computer science behavior, two of the points for the assignment is going to be for consistency of work. One of them is going to be uh, screenshotting and showing me that you've made good forward progress on the game as of next Friday, you have one week to put at least the basics of the game together. And then uh, on the last day, you know, the day that it's due, I want to see the commit log. I want to see that you guys have been working on it steadily. It doesn't have to be every day. 
Uh, in fact, every day feels a little suspicious to me. But what I don't want to see is the standard graph of zero, 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 midnight the night before, and, <laughs> and suddenly people like panic and everybody starts working on it, you know, the night before. I don't want to see that. You will not get a point for consistency if you try and do everything the last minute. I want to see you guys working on it, um, you know, for all three weeks. Uh, possibly not during spring break. I, I, I am, you know, sympathetic to spring break being a, a vacation. But uh, you have at least two non-spring break weeks for you guys to be working on this. And I want to see commits. Uh, I had a student last time uh, do fake commits. So he was, uh, he would add a comment going blah, blah, blah. And then he would commit it to the GitHub repo. And then he would pull it out and go blah, blah, blah. You know, he, he would add, add the comment in and take it out so that he had a couple commits every time to have that nice green GitHub activity log. And I'm like, no, bro, like, no, don't, don't do that. You, you will get negative points if you, if you try uh, gaslighting me on your GitHub activity. I can see all the changes you make. And uh, if you're, if you're just, you know, just spinning your wheels, trying to get those, trying to get that nice activity log looking good where you're not actually doing anything, I will take off points for that because that, that annoys me. You know, just if you're going to do work, just do work. You know, it doesn't have to be a lot. Just always be making forward progress. It's a good, good uh, life lesson to learn. To just always be like, you know, because when you're working at a job, you don't get to take off a week and not do anything and then wait to the last minute. You're at your job working every day. Or at least you should be. <laughs> okay, now for the individual section, what I, I'm going to give you guys some time today to talk amongst yourselves and your groups. And uh, I want you to assign roles. This is different from the milestone project. We have a project director and so forth. For this one, there is a specific implementation task that each of the four people in your group are going to have to do. Yep. Bless you. Bless you. <coughs> Triple blessed. Uh, if, if you have somebody missing from your group, like somebody gets sent to the ghost brigade, then, you know, you don't need to worry about that part. And if you have five people, there's a special for this one. So the first role is called the inheritor of suffering. So the inheritor of suffering has to design a complicated class hierarchy. And, uh, <laughs> uh, and the, uh, you're going to have to make an actor class and actors, anything that can appear in the world. So it'll have like an X and a Y location. But it should be an abstract class. You can't just instance an actor. Uh, you can inherit from the actor class having like a hero class and a monster class. And then the hero class can be subspecialized into fighter, thief, clerk, and wizard. I'm just tossing out ideas. You don't have to do them exactly this way. I'm just saying you need to build a class hierarchy. And, and, that, and class hierarchies are kind of annoying to, to make. And that's why you are called the inheritor of suffering. That's your title. Inheritor of suffering. Uh, you have to have at least five monsters. You have to have at least four hero types. They all need to be meaningfully, meaningfully different. Uh, don't just have like the fighter has it has an extra, you know, health and the cleric has an extra magic point or something like that. Like they, they need to be like, you know, substantially different. In the readme file, you're going to have to uh, sketch out the class hierarchy, uh, actor, hero, cleric, you know, that kind of relationship, like an org chart. Kind of thing. Um, sketch it out, show it, and uh, in the game itself, you have to make sure that you're you have a party of four to six. So you've got multiple characters in the party walking around fighting multiple monsters at once. Yep. Uh, all the classes need to work. All of them need to do interesting, different stuff, and be detailed to get a ten, 10 out of ten. The bridge, the bridge engineer, the bridge engineer, the bridges engineer, is the uh, person responsible for visualizing the turn order for combat. So you're going to roll initiative for combat. Uh, if you've ever played a role-playing game that has like a turn-based role-playing system, you'll see something like this, where basically Fane is the next person to go. It's, it, it's currently his turn. And then he's next, then she's next, then it's next, then he's next. And then you can see that after everybody's gone, then Fane gets to go again, then he goes again. Then she goes again. It's a circular linked list. Okay. So you've been setting linked lists. So a initiative turn order is a circular linked list. When you get to the tail and you say, hey, who's next? It's not null. It's the beginning again. 
And when people die, they need to come off the linked list. And people, I don't know, well, people usually aren't born in the middle of combat. It'd be a little awkward. But, like, if you summon a monster or something, I don't know, then you would add, you would add a new monster to the linked list. And combat's only over once all of one side is dead. So if the only people in the linked list are heroes, the heroes win. If the only people left in the linked list are monsters, the monsters win. And your job as the bridge engineer is to visualize the uh, the turn order. Okay. So at any point in combat, the user should be able to hit snapshot and it'll send a visualization of the current turn order to bridges. It doesn't have to have pictures or anything cool like that, just you know, the circular link list. And then the 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 user can look at it and be like, oh, that's the turn order. But if they're revived, then yeah, then you know they get re-added to the to the link list. Um, there is a really helpful file for whoever is your bridge in, bridge engineer. Um, that file right there contains everything you need to know about how to visualize a circular linked list on bridges. Again, I'm giving you no code. I'm giving you no starter code. But you know what that uh that URL there has? It's got starter code. It's got complete code for making a circular linked. So all you need to do is tie together um, your world, which has heroes and monsters, with the bridges code. So basically, for every mon for every monster, insert a monster into the linked list. For every hero, insert a hero into the linked list. And make sure it's sorted by by speed. Okay. Um, bum. The third person is called the Jujutsu Kaisen uh, Curse Lord. And so the uh, the curse master, the curse lord, is responsible for learning a library called Incurses. So Incurses is um, uh, curses. Incurses is like new curses, but going way back in time, curses was developed to allow full screen text applications that don't require you to um, type an entire sentence. Like if you if you see right here. I can hit right arrow, up arrow, down arrow, and it instantly responds, right? I don't need to, like when you do CNN and see out, all the text just kind of scrolls off the top of the screen. You can't ever move the cursor back up, right? It just scrolls the text like you have a typewriter, you know what that is. And when you type things, CN doesn't see anything until you hit return. Once you hit return, then CN sees the entire sentence that you typed. And Vim, the second I hit a keystroke, it instantly responds. It uses curses for this. If you don't want to use curses, you can use my uh, my library, my colors library, which is like curses. Uh, it's a lot less feature filled. There's a lot less things you can do with it, but uh, it may be easier to learn. Anyhow, so there is a article here and here and here on learning and curses. So you, whoever is the Jiu-Jitsu Kaisen curse lord, it is your job to become the expert in doing TUIs. TUI is a text user interface. And uh, you have to build an interface for the program uh, using incurses. So if you want to see like another example of what that would look like, there's a game called NetHack. Uh, do you want to pick the... No, I'll pick the iron. I want to be a tourist. I will be a male tourist. Uh, and I have to be human, I guess. Yeah, sure. Okay. So, uh, you can see here, like we've got text over here. We've got a world map, like over here. We've got a status bar down here. That's got my strength and dex and con and all this other stuff. And then I can use, uh, the letter keys to walk around. Yeah, I've got a dog that is following me here. Uh, and then I can walk around through some quarters. You see how I'm not having to like type hello world return to do anything. Like the second I type something, the game world instantly reacts to it. And when I come into another door, line of sight, you see that? You see your large box. I want to loot the box. Sure. Hmm, turns out to be loot. Okay. Three gold pieces, an etched helmet, a cayenne potion. Um, So, yeah, I don't know, maybe, maybe I shouldn't play the game, but really quit, yeah, sure, okay. And plus two darts, look at that, a Hawaiian shirt, amazing, okay. Okay, so anyway, so that is, uh, that is NetHack, and that's just 
you know, not that you need to make a net hack, but you see how that works where there's like a world map and there's colors and then they've got an area there for showing text and then they got a status bar. Things like that is what you need to do. That seems nuts. Uh, it's not that bad. Um, if you want to look at uh, CD up up RPG 41 old dash two. Um, here is a little thing that I made where I'm just using the arrow keys. You can see the hero, the H in the middle there. He kind of like walks around. The world scrolls around him. Uh, that there's a uh, water. So the world just kind of randomly generates water. Like you can see, there's water here. There's walls, there's monsters. Uh, it doesn't interact with any of them. They just kind of like walk through the world. So you can kind of like walk around this top down universe here and you can add code to like fight monsters when you touch them and things like that. Does that hack a 10 out of 10? Yeah, if you can. <laughs> I used to offer extra credit to my students to uh, beat NetHack. And uh, that was mean because uh, they spent all their time playing video games instead of programming. Um, so I don't, I don't do that anymore. Uh, we got demo code. So inside of the colors.h, uh, you can see um, another way if you don't learn in curses. But uh, basically, you're going to have to show me you've, dem you've learned in curses. And it's it's not maybe as hard as you might think. Um, there's a function called move printw. And basically, it just says move to this row, this column, and print this string there. So you can say, so if you did move print w uh, 0, 0, comma, hello world, it would print hello world at the very top left corner of the screen. And so you just choose where to draw things on the screen. So, um, but yeah, you, that's your job. Your job is just doing the interface. Uh, and then finally, we have Sephiroth, the master of the tree. So your job is to make an inventory system using a BST. You can either use your own BST or you can use the standard library. You use the standard library, you get one point knocked off. So it's up to you whether or not you want the 10 out of 10 or the 9 out of 10 is good enough. Um, basically, uh, what separates this from your BST assignment is that you can have duplicates. You can have 40 arrows, not just, yes, I have an arrow, or no, I don't have an arrow. You can have 40 arrows. You can have two potions, okay? So you not only have to have a, um, a string for, like, the thing you pick up, you're also going to have to have a count. Um, you're going to have to be able to pick up and drop items in the world. You're going to have to be able to kill monsters and get their loot. So monsters are going to need to have... Uh, what score they've gone for that game. Well, it wasn't interactive at all, but um, that that's kind of the idea of what I'm looking for for your uh, uh, world code kind of, kind of thing. Uh, so you need to be able to pick up and drop items, buy and sell items from a merchant. Um, items should have interesting different statistics. So you might have like a minor healing potion, a major healing potion. You can have weapons that have different speeds that affect your initiative speed. Damage values, costs, damage, things like that. So, so this person is kind of responsible for all things items and inventory related. Um, so the multi-map and the multi-set uh, classes in the standard library allow you to have duplicates of the same of the same thing. So uh, you can have ten arrows instead of just yes, I have arrows, <laughs> which is what you get when you have a set. So 10 out of 10 if you write your own BSD class, 9 out of 10 if you use multi-map. And then finally, if you have a fifth person, then they are, and which is by my permission only, if you have a fifth person in your group, then you become a scared balloon. So the scared balloon role is responsible for implementing a weather system and for doing quests, making a quest system. So uh, if you don't have a fifth person, ignore that part and just... Um, you know, do the do the four you have. If you have a group of three, you can figure out, well, nobody wants to be the curse master. I don't want to be a curse lord. I'm a jujitsu practitioner. I hate curses. Um, <laughs> so, uh, yeah, that's basically it for today. I want you guys to talk amongst yourselves and uh, figure out which role each person is going to be. Your lab time for today is going on to GitHub following the link the, uh, that is in the readme file here. 
and having each person do a push to the uh, to the project, create a file called readme.md. Each person can put their name in there and uh, show me you're alive in a way I'm willing to work um, instead of uh, being a ghost. If you're a ghost and you don't submit anything by Sunday, you get a free admission to the Ghost Brigade. And that's it for today, guys. Uh, so talk amongst yourselves in the whatever time you have left. And uh, hope to see some of you at 5 o'clock for Irish music. I got my green t-shirt on already. Good to go. We're going to be talking about traditional Irish music today. All right, guys. Peace out.